So I've been asked to create a video on how to create a cluster dedicated server for Ark Survival Ascended. Uh, with the release of Scorch Surf, there's demand to be able to transfer from one server to another and be able to transfer your items and dinos safely. Uh, this will be a continuation from my previous video. If you haven't already, be sure to check out that video on how to create a dedicated server using the Steam client and using a bat script to update and run the server. Uh, this is basically going to be a modification of the current script. I will also show you how to copy your current player data to the newly created cluster. First thing we will want to do is open the Steam client. Make sure that under Games, Software, and Tools, that Tools is, is checked off. If it's not checked off, you won't see the Survival Ascended server in the list. So we're just going to right-click on this, go to Manage, Browse Local Files. Before we start anything, I would go up one, uh, right, double click on shooter game, and I would make a backup of this save file. This is basically where all your dino saves, player saves, and and uh, map save is. So just be safe, I would uh, back that up. So from here, we're going to double click on binaries, Windows 64, and we should have our server update.bat and our start server.bat from our previous video. So we're just going to update the server. All right, next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create a new batch file and we're gonna put it in this, in this path right here. So we're gonna open up Notepad and we're gonna paste this script here. I'll put this in the video description to make it easy to copy and paste. But I'll, I'll kind of review uh, what the script is doing and you can modify the values uh, based on uh, how you created the server. So right here, we are giving the path to where the Steam CMD is, is saved. So this is our update. So this is going to update the server. We're then going to pause. So it's going to give you a prompt. It's going to tell you to press any key to continue to close after it does update. After that, we are going to start the island. And we're going to be using port 7777. Query port 27015. Session name, I just called mine Cluster Island. This is basically what your server is going to be called. And then we're going to use these new values. So alt save directory name. I would keep it the same as, as I have it as save one. No really need to change it. And then for mods, if you have any mods, you're going to put your mods here, dash mods, and the, then the mod ID. Uh, you can check out my video on how to add mods as well, if you haven't already. Uh, for this one, I'm using a mod for the Gigantoraptor, so feel free to use the mod if you want. And we have the value for crossplay, so this is if you want to play with PC, Xbox, and, and uh, PlayStation. Uh, I haven't quite tested it, but I did see when it ran that it didn't say that it was only for PC, so it should work. And dash cluster ID, I would suggest calling this a bit different than cluster one. Um, this is kind of like the default of what a lot of people will use, so you can name that something different if you want. And then we're going to tell it to start another server, so end start, and then we're going to tell it to start Scorched Earth. So this is the Scorched Earth uh, map ID. And then we're going to use port 7779. So you can have uh, multiple servers run in a cluster. Uh, basically the ports, you the first one's going to use 7777 to 7778. So the next one will be 7779 to 7780. And I'll show you the port forwarding uh, later on in this video. The query port, we're using basically the next set after that. So for 27015, this is what the first one's using to 27016. And the query port will use 27017 to 27018. If you want another map, it would be 27019. And respectively, the 777. 7781 would be your next one, if that makes sense. And then session name, we're going to call this one Cluster Scorched. And alt save directory name, we're just going to call this save2. What it's going to do is it's going to create two save folders, and I'll show you. And then we have our mods again. Crossplay, if you want to have it be crossplay. And we use the same dash cluster ID as the, as the first one. All right, once we have this configured how we want it, 
we're just going to save it in, into the Windows 64 folder. I'll put the path up on the screen. And we're just going to call it arc cluster server dot bat. You can name this whatever you want. And we'll just save that. All right, once we've created our batch file, we're just going to run it. It will start up two files. So if you want, you can close this and it will skip the, the update. Um, if you've already updated, you don't need to do this. This is basically like if there is an update, it's every time we run this, it'll try this first, right? But you can just close this and you can hit any key to continue. What that will do is it will then start up two, two servers. So we will have our, all right, we will have our uh, cluster island server started and our cluster scorch server. So it's going to do that all in one shot once you open up the script. It'll update first, like I said, but you can skip that if you want to. All right, once the server is up and running, we're going to try to connect to it. So same as before, we're going to go to unofficial. We're going to type in the name of our server. So mine's called Cluster Island. And we're going to have show password protected servers checked. And PC only will be unchecked. So this basically means that cross, serve sh cross play should be working. And then show player servers, make sure that's checked. We'll refresh it and you'll see. Now, when you join this... Don't be alarmed. Your save files will not be here right now. We are what we are going to do. We're just basically creating a save file. So we're just going to join and create a new character, and then we're going to close the server. So we'll just call this test, and we'll just start create. Are you the spot. one I've been waiting for? We've created a new character, so we're just going to exit the main menu. And then we'll just close down the server from the other side. Uh, we're just going to close down the servers first, and then we're going to basically go to this path. I'll put the path on the screen for reference. So what we did in the script, it created a clusters folder. And if you open up that, it's going to be called cluster1 or whatever you named it. And then we created a save one and a save two. So save one is for the island. Save two is for scorched earth. Saved arcs. This is your original save file. So if you watch my last videos and you've made your own progress in your server, this is where all the saves are. But first we're going to go to save one. We're going to double click the island and we're just going to delete these files. So all the files in here, this is the test files that we just created. So we're just going to delete those. And then we're going to go back up to saved arcs and we're going to copy everything in here. So this is all your files. So that's why I said it's a good idea to make a backup just in case. And we're just going to drop that into save one under the island WP. And then we're just going to paste that there. All right, now we're just going to start the server again. Uh, using our arc cluster server dot bat that we created. And on the computer that's going to be connected, we're just going to look for the server again. So cluster island, just give it a couple minutes to start up. And we'll put in our password. All right, so it looks like nothing happened, but if we look, this is the save file that I had created as a test, so it is level 9. So when we first started it, we were stuck at level 1, so this is just to show you that it does work. So as long as you followed my steps, you should have no problem keeping your save file from before. 
So now that this is all done, all we need to do is just modify our port settings, and I'll show you how to do that now. Search up CMD and run that as an administrator. Uh, this is similar to my last video, so if you watch my last video, you can skip this part of the video. But basically, we're going to just open it up, and we're going to run it as administrator, and type in ipconfig. And we're going to look for our Ethernet or wireless adapter. So in this case, I'm using Ethernet. So we will look for our default gateway and also our IPv4. So the default gateway is the address we use to get into your router. And your IP, we're going to use that to do the port forwarding. So we're going to open up a browser and I'm going to put in my default gateway, which is 192.168.2.1 in this case. And it will probably ask you for an admin password. You can check the back of your router if you don't know it. Or you can look up online uh, uh, steps specifically for your router. Every router is a bit different. But we're basically looking for something called port forwarding. So mine's in my advanced settings. And basically it's the same as before. We are just going to be adding different ports this time. So we're just expanding the range. So it's 27015 to 27018 and 7777 to 7780. So we're adding four for, for two servers, basically. So just to kind of give you an example, so we're going to create a new rule. I'm just going to call it 7777. And I'm going to put it as both for TCP and UDP if yours has uh, an option for just one or the other, just do two rules. But basically, we're going to do 7777, uh, 7780, yeah. And then basically, we're just going to then use the IP address that we found from CMD. So mine's 192.168.2.19. Oh, shoot. Oh, yeah. 192. Dot 2.19 and we'll do that for for both of them so we want the 77 and the 27015 so we'll just create that mine's gonna say i already have one but basically we just create that and then we hit save all right the next step we're going to want to create some firewall rules so we're just going to search up firewall windows defenders firewall and then we're going to click on advanced settings and then inbound rules. So we're going to, on the right side, going to hit new rule. And we're going to choose port. TCP. And we're just going to use the same ports we just used. Sorry, 27018. And we can copy this to make it easier. And we'll hit next. Allow the connection. Make sure these are all checked off. And we'll call this ARC TCP. Then we'll click new rule again. We'll click UDP. And we'll paste the same ports as before. Hit next. Allow. Make sure those are all checked, and then we'll call that Arc UDP. And that's all we have to do for the firewall settings. All right, uh, so once we have the port forwarding and the firewall rules set, uh, we can join our server. Uh, once we start up the server again using our Arc server, Arc cluster server dot bat that we created. So we'll just look up cluster island. There we go. We'll join. And we'll try and uh, connect over to our cluster just to, test to make sure everything's working. One thing to mention is that you want to make sure that your game user settings uh, has the same mod ID as is showing in the script. So if you watch my last video on mods, so if you don't want mods, just don't have that in the script. Basically, once we get here, we're going to go into our terminal by, by hitting the tilde key. 
Uh, well, I mean, this is just to show you that it's working, but you don't have to cheat. But uh, basically, I'll just go to enable cheats. And then we're going to use our admin password to enable cheats. So enable cheat space 1112. And then we're going to do admin cheat lie. Actually, let's do got mode first. And then we'll do admin cheat lie. And there we go. Just doing this just so to show you quickly that the cluster does work. <laughs> we're going to fly over to the cluster. access terminal then we're going to click on travel to another server this is how you basically uh switch between servers and it will actually automatically show you what's on the cluster right so it's showing right now my cluster scorched but because we use cluster one as the id somebody else used that as cluster one so we have access to theirs but it's, it's locked right because it has a password but that's why it's a good idea to change cluster one to something different but we will just click join. It will ask us for a password. And as long as we followed everything, we should have no problem going to our cluster server. Uh, I did also test uh, adding items. So in your game user settings, you might want to put some commands in there because right now there's no cooldown for adding items. So if you don't mind that, then just leave it as it is. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of extra commands you can add. But since it's the first time for us joining, it will spawn our survivor. And there you have it. So that is how you basically create a ARC Survival Ascended cluster server. Uh, if you did find that this video was helpful, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Um, I really do appreciate all who have uh, supported the channel so far. <laughs> uh, because we just switched over, our, our cheats are not enabled anymore. But yeah, I do appreciate all of those that have supported the channel. And, uh, you know, like I said, it does give me motivation to keep doing these videos. I did put a lot of work into this video, so I hope uh, it was very helpful. And uh, if you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments and I'll try and answer as best that I can. Thank you very much for watching and have a great night.